Hello 4th Dimension viewers, today we're taking a look at the Nikon F6, a 35mm film camera released in 2004. It came out when many professional and enthusiasts had already switched to digital cameras, as I had. Because of this, less than 37,000 were ever made. Nikon offered these brand new from the factory up until October 2020 when it was discontinued. And it's likely it'll be the last 35mm film camera the company will ever make. The F5 that proceeded was the flagship camera used by many professionals in the 90s. It introduced 3D color matrix metering, it integrated vertical grip, and improved upon the autofocus from the F4. If you're looking for a fully manual experience, the F5 and the F6 are not for you. But if you want an infallible meter, fast and accurate autofocus, and DSLR-like ergonomics, they are. Speaking about the F5, batteries are its gift and curse. The body without a lens weighs 3 pounds or 1.4 kilos with its 8 AA batteries. The nice thing is, you can probably dig through your couch and find 8 AA's. The F6 on the other hand ditches the AA's in lieu of two smaller and more expensive CR123A batteries, while being efficient enough to run off these two smaller batteries for about as long as the F5 did. Of course, you can get the optional MB40 to make the F6 use AA's or a rechargeable ENEL4A. The other major difference between the two is when it comes to the viewfinders. Nikon did away with the removable viewfinder on the F6. The F6 seems to have a much brighter viewfinder compared to the F5, though I'm not sure it might just be my cameras, so please let me know in the comments if you notice that for yourself. Frame rates aren't that important to me in a film camera as I'm rarely blasting away on continuous high, but the F5 will do 8 frames per second to the 5.5 of the F6 without the grip. Film isn't cheap and it's only getting more expensive. Kodak just announced in January 2023 that they plan to raise their film prices by up to 40%. The F5 and the F6 give me the best chance of getting the shot in focus, properly exposed, so I can focus on the composition and be confident that I'm not throwing away $3 every time I click. The F6 took everything I loved about the F5, improved upon them, and packaged it in a smaller, lighter body. I plan to keep both to have the F5 as a backup camera or have a second focal length or film stock so I can avoid switching lenses or films in the field. One of my favorite features of the F6 is that it can print your camera settings and the date in between the frames. That way I can look at the negatives and see what I did right or wrong so I can learn for the next roll. Previously you had to write that down in a notebook so you could remember what you did. If you're familiar with modern Nikon DSLRs like the D850, you'll pick up this camera without skipping a beat. All the buttons are exactly where you expect them to be, and you almost don't even need to look to know what you're pressing. I hope to create more content and grow this community, so please subscribe, like, and share this with a fellow camera nerd. You can also follow me on Instagram at Julian Falk to see some of my photography with various camera systems. Thank you for watching.